After heat treating and tempering, I sand the entire blade to 400 grit for a final finish. Now back to the guard. I lay out the shape of the guard and start grinding. Begin shaping the contours of the guard. Flat grind the face of the guard to 400 grit. Hand sand the face of the guard to 600 grit. Attach the guard to the knife and peen the pin into place. Add heat block to help prevent heat transfer to the blade when soldering. Heat the guard and knife and solder the guard into place. Smooth out and clean the solder joints and let cool. Sand the excess solder from the guard's face to 600 grit. Refinish the blade area joining the guard. Touch up the final finish on the blade. Remove the excess solder from the back of the guard. Sand it flat so the handle, scales, and spacers will rest flat to their surfaces. Scribe handle lines into the brass spacer material and then cut it out with the bandsaw. Drill pin holes and some extra holes for a better bond. Grind the burrs off the newly drilled holes. Cut the handle material to size. I'm using black and green linen micarta. Apply epoxy to all surfaces on one side of the knife and begin inserting the spacers. Epoxy handle material to the spacer and tang of the knife. Clamp it all together and let the epoxy set. Trim the excess handle material with the bandsaw. Drill the pinholes through the handle material. Epoxy the spacers and handle material to the other side of the knife. Clamp it and let it set. Trim the handle and drill the holes through the other side of the handle. Sand the mosaic pins for a better bond. Epoxy the mosaic pins into place and peen them being careful not to distort the pins internal pattern.
File the tight curves and finger notches close to the knife steel. Grind the handle flush to the profile of the knife. Grind the pins to their final height while shaping the handle, being careful not to overheat them. Continue to shape the handle with the grinder and spindle sander. Now hand sand the handle and guard to its final shape, working through the consecutive grits. Mask off the handle and blade and then buff the guard to a mere finish. Add furniture wax to the micarta handle and buff with a loose wheel. Remove the masking tape and clean the knife. Electro etch my name into the blade. This knife will have a leather sheath. I begin laying out the pattern. Cut the pattern and groove the folding areas. Wet the leather and mold the knife to the leather. Measure and cut the gusset. Glue the gusset into the sheath and clamp it together. Now I cut and shape the ambidextrous belt loop. Skive the ends so they will taper into the stitching. Wet the leather and stamp my design pattern. Burnish the ends and fold my crease. Glue the belt loop into place and clamp. Once the glue has cured, I grind the sheath to final shape. A drainage hole is drilled at the end of the sheath. The edge of the sheath is moistened and marked for stitching. I use a drill press to bore my stitching holes.
Moisten the edge of the sheath and burnish everything smooth. Then I hand stitch the sheath. Black leather dye is brushed on or the sheath is dipped. A leather sealer is airbrushed on inside and out. Once the sheath is complete, the final step is to sharpen the knife. The final cutting edge is then buffed or stropped on leather to deburr and polish the cutting edge. The cutting performance is then tested by cutting newspaper. If it cuts through the newspaper cleanly, it's sharp. And here is the finished product. Most of my knives come with a certificate of completion with general information such as what the knife is made of, physical properties, and a completion date. For more information on what I have to offer, please visit www.rougeauknives.com. Thanks for watching this overview of how I make a full tang knife.